Well, hello, everybody. I don't know who's here, but um, say hello. Uh, I'll check the I'll check the uh, comments and try to if you have any questions. I see there's about 15 people watching right now. Wanda's here. Yay. Um, so if I can see, I'll see that you're here when you say hello. Kathy's here. Oh, great. Kathy. So nice to see you. So hello. Hello. Well, happy new year. We've made it another year, right? <laughs> we did it. Um, so today we're going to do something that's really meditative for me. It's also a wonderful um, activity for it for paper folding, but also paper decorating. And I use my it's in in the fabric world. It's called shibori. In the paper world, it's something else. And somebody might be able to tell me orizagami. And I'm going to give you hi June. And Patty's here. Um, I will give you kind of the options as much as many options as you is you know as I possibly can. And if you have questions, of course. So just to kind of show you, this is how I use some of my shibori or my dip. It's basically folded folded in dyed paper, just like you would do with the fabric, except it's with the paper. And I use it not only for things like this, but I use it in my collage work. So here's a little piece here, some pieces here, and it gives you a nice contrasting, um, very contrasty, uh, very dramatic dark and light. So um, I really love working this way. It's a nice thing, you know, to do just in an afternoon. You want to make a batch of this stuff and then you can use it later. And oh, Becky's there too. Great. And Julie. Hi, Julie. Happy New Year. So what you need, very basic materials. Okay, so we'll start with the basic materials. Since we're not doing fabric, but you very well can do this with fabric. Um, it's just a different, little different folding approach than you would if you were using fabric. But so I'm using um, the 6JM washi paper that's a little thinner than the 6H. I use the 6JM because it's, first of all, larger, a little bigger, and it's a little thinner and I can fold it um to really small folds to get really neat delicate uh dark and lights and then the 6h i use as well so i'll be using both of those today and i'm going to put those down out of my way and i also am going to use a variety of here's some little just some ideas for your inks you can always use sumi ink and this is the kf series um, this has a little bit of uh, PVA in it for more water resistance. So this is what I would use. But if I really wanted to make it waterproof, I would put a little, um, just a little acrylic medium, some very, some high flow type acrylic medium. Uh, if you want to use it for fabric, fabric, you can use fabric medium and that would stay in your fabric. So this, if you have Sumi ink, this is fine. Use it. Um, I have also, just to show you different options in your, you're you're dying you can use any kind of acrylic ink because that will not move around once you if you re-wet it or if you put glue over it it's not going to lift so uh, acrylic inks are really great um i this one i'll i just made this a little this one thing a little while ago using this so uh, acrylic ink you can use also um i'm going to try some pen fountain pen ink I mean, why not, right? Whatever you've got in your stash, you know, you've got whatever you've got, acrylic ink like the De La Rowney. Um, yeah, try a sepia and see what happens. But so I've got all these little inks. And the reason I do it this way, I've got abstract sennelier that has a little bit of shellac in it that, that'll work great. Some indigo color. And I also have some watercolor, the the, hide, the pH, Dr. Martin's hide, hydrous watercolor. That will probably do fine because it is a watercolor. It's going to just soak into the paper and it won't lift really. It shouldn't move around if you need to glue or use, you know, do anything with it later. Um, another thing you're going to need is if, you, if you're going to do this uh, with me, you need some brushes. I use some Japanese brushes, but any brush with, brush with a point that holds a lot of ink, that's that would be nice to have. I also have some little metal trays. I have some rubber bands I'm going to work with. Um, this is just to keep my my area, try to contain it if, I, if it's possible. Another thing is I use uh, tongue depressors. Um, these are great for holding the paper flat while you're dyeing it. 
And here's uh, some chopped, no, these are, what are these? Skewers. And I've already pre-folded these um, ahead of time, but uh, this is kind of how they look when, when you're getting ready to get to dye it. But rubber bands are great because it holds the, the little pieces together. No one kitty's here. Yay, I'm so glad you're here. Um, so rubber bands, and if you don't have rubber bands, cotton string, cotton twine, anything like that, a pair of scissors. And so I'm gonna just kind of give you an overview of what I'm gonna do today. I'm going to do three different types. I'm gonna show you three styles of this paper. It's just so pretty. And I'm gonna explain them so you can see this. All right, so the first one I'm gonna show you is called the diamond um, pattern. And this is this is how it looks when it's done. Now this one I did maybe 15, 20 minutes ago. I had to blow dry it to get it done fast. But it, it just came out so gorgeous. And what I used was this whole line acrylic ink and I mixed a little bit of some Payne's Gray Dale and Rowney, interesting. And it gave this beautiful kind of gray black with this like bluish gray tint tone. And I just think that looks really pretty. So this is ready to go because it's acrylic. So, you know, it's it's good to go to do collage or anything else. Another, so that's the one, I'm gonna show you that. And I'm also gonna show you something called, I call it the bone pattern. I don't know if that's really what it's called, but I call it that because it kind of looks like little bones. If you can see, it's the bone pattern here. Um, I'm sure that there is a real name for it, <laughs> but this one is just long. It's basically one long, very contrasty pattern. Here's the same one, but it's just, I've, I've wet the paper first. So you can do a dry dip, which will give you very harsh lines, or you can wet your paper ahead of time or dampen it ahead of time. And it gives you that really soft muted look. So there's so many things. And Lynn's here. Happy New Year, Lynn. And whoever else I haven't said hello to, just I'm so glad you're here. Um, okay. So I'm just going to kind of go, we've got some folding to do. And here's one here. It's nice. This was made out of... Uh, Remember, this is just a mix of, of a, a Payne's Gray and some blue, but I love these indigo sort of colors. And I like the dramatic, my favorite are the very dramatic, dark and light, because I like mm -hmm. I like that. But if you wanna go a little bit uh, softer, you can do a pale, very pale, soft blended uh, Shibori or Orizagami. Um, here's one that I, okay, so there's a learning curve and I'm gonna show you, explain. This is the first one I did in a certain fold with a certain technique and I and I didn't really get a good impression or, you know, it's not bad, but I see the folds, not so much the dying. So I learned a bit. So here's the second, my second one. No, this is my second one. And then this was my third one. And then today was my fourth in the diamond pattern. And I really think I kind of, after the fourth try. try. Oh, Melinda's here too. Um, after the fourth attempt, I think I got the diamond pattern. So when you're doing this now, of course, I'm going to show you all the different little nuances so that you might not have to go through the trial and error that I did. But um, it just depends on the ink and the paper. And if you dampen it ahead of time, this one is the uh, bone technique. But I uh, wet it first and then I dipped on one side with a turquoise and the other with a uh, a blue black um, fountain pen ink and it just soaked into the paper differently and it, because the I believe there's some shellac in it so it doesn't spread the same and I thought it was really interesting the the really interesting uh, like bleeding or fuzziness or feathering that happens on the outside of that so so I'm going to get I'm going to tell you all of these so here's here's another one I like this one too this one's the diamond pattern so I'm going to show you the diamond pattern first and these so you'll learn three if you don't want to do it with me today, I understand, but hey, make sure, well, save the recording or, or, or something because these are the, the folds or the kind of the things we have to remember. The dying part's not going to be, it'll be messy, but it won't be something you have to remember. So for the diamond pattern, I've got my smooth side on the table. This is the 6JM, and I'm just going to fold it in half like this. Okay, and then I'm going to just take the paper and fold it again, fold it in half, 
just like this. And it doesn't have to be perfectly accurate the way origami has to be, you know, no worries. Um, so now I've got this piece of paper here and I'm gonna fold it like a uh, handkerchief. I'm gonna fold it corner to corner. And this is a good time too, if you have a bone folder or folding tool, you wanna get your creases nice and sharp, it's good to bring, <laughs> bring that out. And what I've got now is I've got this two layers, you know, thick, kind of, not thick, but there's thin, there's paper here, there's paper here, there's a folded edge. Well, this is our folded edge right here. Okay, so I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to fold it in half like this, basically fold, folding the point to the center, just up to the middle. And I'm gonna go ahead and crease. And then I'm going to take the full crease I just made and use that as my guide. I'm gonna lay it right over the edge of the top edge here. So that just basically I'm doing an accordion fold. Uh, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna fold this backwards. So I wanna make sure that my layers or my little folds are right on top of each other. So that they're not wonky, you know, wonky. You want them to be flush, as flush as you can have them. Um, I'm gonna fold the next piece here. Okay, so I've got myself I've made these pleats, you see the pleats? But I wanna go a little thinner. I, I think this would make a very basic pattern, but I like to go a little thinner. So I'm going to uh, reverse these folds. Actually, no, I'm not going to. <laughs> I can reverse these folds. I'm just gonna reverse these folds so there are mountains right here. And this mountain is gonna go right to that center crease. I'm just bringing it in and I'm creasing. And I'm gonna bring this mountain. I'm not really doing it the way I normally do it, but I'm just doing another layer of accordion. So it's going to be about this accordion. I'm just going to fold it is about a little more than half an inch. And I've got all my little pieces lined up like this. So it kind of hey, looks Karen, like a... Yes. Um, June was saying it's a little bit fast. So I know that this is like yeah. not everyone has to fold along, but maybe... Right. Do the other half a little slower? Sure, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, I'll go a little slower. I'll try. <laughs> and you know me. Okay, so I've made this little fan, you know, accordion, like a fan fold, but it sort of went from wide to narrow. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm repeating the exact same thing. Actually, this is the center right there, I think. <laughs> there it is. All right. Well, either way, we've got to get this accordion all in one bunch. It's all going to be one narrow piece. So I'm going to fold this. I hope I'm doing this right. <laughs> I'm not sure, actually, at this point. Let me just take this apart. All right, where's the center? There it is. Okay. So what I want to do is this is the center. This is the original fold. And I'm going to fold this, just folding this up to the top. Okay, and I actually can use this as a guide. So if we just folded this triangle in half, now we're going to make, uh, we're going to do it in quarters. So basically you're gonna fold this edge to that crease you just made. This is one way to do it. We're gonna fold this folded edge over to the top edge. And this is just dividing our fold into a nice even accordion. So if you notice, I have one, two, three creases here, right? In this side, I have the six creases. So that's all I'm doing is I'm going to uh, make this all one big accordion, but one end is narrowed like this on both ends. So I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna lay this down and I'm going to start by folding the one that's already there, the crease that's already there. And I'm gonna take this one and I'm going to make a narrow, I'm just gonna fold it so that my little edge, basically the, this crease lines up right over the one underneath. That's just one way to do it. There's all kinds of ways to fan fold. Now this is, crease is already here, just needs to be reversed. So I'm just folding it. And I'm just trying to be mindful that my little 
ends are kind of all kind of close, they're even. And then this one, see, I've got this one, that crease is going to lay right on top of this edge. And I'll go a little slower, but the whole point is to get your accordion pleats the same, you know, same width. And that's so that they're not wonky all over the place. <laughs> However you do that. Um, I'm just folding it again. You see, I'm just taking that and I'm going to keep zigzagging until I get to the very last, the last where it just lays on top. This little corner comes back, back and forth. You can do it that way, just like I'm doing this way. People that do this with cloth, oh boy, it's a lot different because fabric doesn't fold as easily as paper. But what you want is if you look at this, it just basically is one big, it's just a fan fold. Okay, you can see that. That's a fan fold and it just starts in the middle and goes uh, to both edges, but it's just by folding the points in half and reducing them in half until you get to this. Okay, so that is the diamond fold. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to not do anything yet to this. This is, I haven't bound it yet. I'm not getting it ready to dip just yet. Since we're in the folding mode, um, I'm going to show you what I will do for the next one. So this is the diamond. The, the other one's easier. The bone fold is much easier. Um, the bone fold, I can you can use a rectangle or a square. It doesn't matter. Um, bone fold, I'm just going to take my long edge, or if you have a square, you can do it too. Just fold your paper in half. We're gonna do a, a true accordion. I'm sorry, June, I know I go fast, but <laughs> I'm, it's, I really wanna get, make sure you, everyone gets as much of the information as possible. And then maybe if this one was too complex, try this one. I probably should have started this one first. So this one, I've just folded a rectangle in half. And now I'm going to take the, the little uh, mountain here. See, there's a mountain fold. And I'm bringing that mountain all the way up to the top edge here. I'm just going to bring it to the top edge. And once that mountain or that fold crease is lined up at the top edge, I'm creasing what's underneath. I feel that underneath, and I just creased it. And now I'm going to take the bottom edge, and I'm bringing it up to that top very top edge, and I will crease. So what I've got is four even sections. Simple, this is another a fun way to do it. You There's a mountain in the middle. I'm going to reverse the, I'm reversing those valley folds to be mountain folds so that I have a strip of all mountains. You can kind of see. Oh, and Pat is here. Pat, so nice to see you. So glad you're here. Wonderful. Great. Um, this, so you, need, you can see these are mountains. I'm going to take these mountains and I'm going to bring them up to this very top edge. The top edge. So here we go. I'm bringing this mountain up to the top, lining it up at the top, creasing what's underneath. Take the next mountain. It kind of looks like waves, actually. I'm going to bring that up to the very top edge and crease what's underneath. And I'm going to bring same the next mountain up to the top edge and crease what's underneath. Then the very last, I just bring that up. Okay, so we have these folds. Now we want to get narrow, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to just... You can get a really narrow accordion this way by reversing the valleys to turn them into mountains, just like this. And this paper is so wonderful to work with, as long as you have that smooth side facing you. So now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sections. We're gonna fold it again the same way. We're gonna take that little mountain and bring it up to the edge, crease the Make a crease, it's underneath. Bring the top edge, and just keep bringing those edges up. And that gives you a really nice, uh, even 
accordion. And many of you have seen me do this with the blizzard book. We've done a lot of accordion folding this way. All right, this way. So I'm probably going to not do any more, but I could go one thinner and do it even, make a skinnier fan, but I think we'll just do it at this. This will be a nice bone pattern. Okay, so that is the number two. So got it finished now. And if you look at your fan, it's nice and even. The edges are together. They're not all wonky all over the place. So that's number two. Okay, now number three is called the snowflake fold. <laughs> Gotta remember how to do that. Okay, snowflake. I'm gonna use a piece of, what am I gonna use here to make the snowflake? So basically the snowflake is, um, I'm gonna use a square. Okay, so I'm gonna accordion fold just like, you know, we were doing. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make some folds. I'm gonna to try to get not too skinny. I don't wanna to go too skinny, but I'm just gonna make, a start an accordion. Right now I've got my, just a basic, basic accordion like this. And I'm, I'm gonna do what we were doing. I'm going to, and this is six H paper, so it's a little thicker. That's okay. And now I've got my four spaces or four sections. I'm just gonna bring it up into, I think I'll make a 16 section accordion. So we're gonna just bring those edges up to make a nice accordion. This, this one and this one. Now my edges aren't that even, but I'm not worried about it. <laughs> now this is, I'm gonna just stop at this, but I think you could go, if you had thinner paper, you can go a little thinner, but this would be fine to show, demonstrate the snowflake pattern. Now the difference between uh, this one, I'm just gonna straighten these out a little bit because they are a little wonky. And this is where hey, your tool comes in handy, like this. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold it this way, but you're gonna do, a triangle, like a flag fold. You're gonna just fold it in diagonally in the one direction, and it gets a little thick and wonky and heavy. And then you're gonna turn it over and you're gonna diagonally fold it in the other direction. So it's like a flag, if you've ever done that. You just fold it and kind of walk it down the length. However we can do this, it gets really thick but you're gonna basically do a little accordion in a kind of a sort of your folds are gonna be diagonally going this way. Basically, we'll see as I do it. But it feels a little funny because you'll feel like everything's getting off kilter and it does, but it seems to work. I've done it a few times and I've not had too much trouble. This is the really small one. But you can see how I'm just kind of keeping it along the length and I'm just holding it in my hand and just kind of bringing that, just lining it up um, on what's underneath. And it kind of starts to walk and go do whatever it wants to do. <laughs> but here, I'll show you what's underneath so you can see how that looks, okay? So we're just kind of gonna go through the length of this thing. And if you need to adjust, move your paper around so that it's lining up, you know, flush, you, that's fine. You can do that. And this isn't perfection, but it's just a demonstration. I think if I were doing this, I'd do it on a bigger piece, a little bit bigger piece, and maybe not so many little folds, because maybe few cre fewer creases maybe um, on the accordion. But let's... I'm just demonstrating the folds. So you've got the three folds. Basically, you keep folding until it gets to the end, like this. And now that one, it has a little edge, which all you need to do with that little edge is just kind of fold it backwards 
you know, it's not a big deal. But this one, you can see it's really kind of very uh, bulky. And here's a thing I like to do with these. In fact, all the papers. I'm going to take a little bit of water. Now I'm going to start to bind all of them. So I'm going to get some rubber bands. Okay. And we can use string too, but I'll show you the rubber band thing too. So, so starting with this one, even though that's not perfect, oh well. I'm going to just take my water. I'm going to take a little pan so I don't mix up. And I'm going to spritz this. I'm going to just spritz it with a little dampen it. I don't want it sopping wet, but I have a fine mist sprayer and some distilled water. Or you can just use water from your tap, depending on where you live. Where I live, water from the tap, it's almost like rocks come out. It's just so mineral, <laughs> thick with minerals. So I don't usually usually like to put my artwork, subject my artwork to it. So I've got it slightly damp, and that helps to compress it a little bit. It needs to be even wetter, I think. So the wetter it is, the more the different it will make a difference in how your ink will absorb into the paper. Okay, so it feels nice and damp, but not sopping. And it, it makes it so it really compresses nicely. And I'm just going to take a little rubber band. And you, to do it properly, like in the Japanese uh, style, you would want to bind it evenly at the top like this. So I've got my top here and I'm just going to take it if it wants to stay. That's a big, huge, that's not going to work. It has to be a smaller. <laughs> I don't want to spend too much time binding it. So you want that rubber band fairly tight. Okay, so see how I just did it across like this? And the you could do it, uh, the other one to go from here to here, and the other one to go from here to here. I don't have much luck because the paper is so uh, it's not going to work. So what I do is I just put a little bit on this end. It seems to be fine. And the, wherever you put the rubber band is going to have a little resist as well. It'll leave a little mark, which is really nice on your um, on your pieces. So there is one piece ready to go. And what I usually do is I keep it damp. I just kind of keep it damp. And I'm just going to you know leave it there in my little in my little tray. <laughs> and I'm going to take the second one. This is the bone one. I'm just going to put it back in its, in its original spot. This one, I'm going to do dry so you can see what it's like when they're dry. Now, you could take something like this. Well, this is kind of fat, actually. Well, I guess I'm going to have to do it. Um, this one, I'm going to use this popsicle or tongue depressors as my, is a Basically, it's going to be a way to kind of keep it flat. Um, I'm going to go ahead and dampen it because I think it really makes a difference. So I'm going to dampen my paper just a little and put it back in the accordion. And really, it doesn't, as long as you're gentle with, oops, I kind of overdid it there. If you're gentle with the uh, paper, it's not going to tear if you're very gentle. There we go. And I'm going to put that like this, and I'm going to probably dampen it a little more even. And I'm going to stick it right on my little popsicle stick thing. Or not popsicle, tongue depressor. But if you have popsicle sticks, something. And I'm going to just take a little rubber band and tight. Put just a couple of places where I'm going to secure that. Okay. And that's it on that one. Simple, right? And then this one, the same thing. I want to, I really want to, oh, I didn't do that. Well, this time I'm not going to, with this one, I'm just going to use some string. So if you have string, you can do that. I'm just going to take a little bit of the string and I'm going to go ahead and tighten it. But I'm going to put this one, give a little moisture in this one too, on both sides. So that it will just take that in so well. There we are. And now I'll just take my little, start my, I think I'll start it in the center. And I'll kind of, no, I'll start it at the end. Nope, the center, because my hands, it won't let me. <laughs> so you can also wrap just gentle, tight, but not so tight that it, you know, um, that the string, 
squishes the paper. Uh, you don't want to squish the paper, but you want to hold it firmly. So you want that to be kind of tight so that these layers are nice and uh, together. And I'm hoping I cut enough string for this. Yep. And there we go. So I'm just going to tie this together. Maybe one more right in the center. So preparing this is the, the hardest part. It takes the longest is the folding and the prepping. But once you've got all of your little pieces, then the fun, messy fun begins. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and just get this nice and wet. So I've got this one. Oh, I've got some that are dry too. This one's, a, these are wet. Okay. And these are dry. I prepped these a few days ago, but they're the same, pretty much the same fold. Except this one, I folded it in half um, instead of just one length. This one is a bone fold, but it's folded in half. I'll wet this one just on the edges so you can, there'll be a difference in how I'm going to take the ink as well. So that, I'm just going to get soaked on the edges only. This one, same thing. I'm just going to try different things. So you'll see when we start to get messy and inky, what happens? This one's same, just on the outside. Okay, now for the fun. All right, now this is where I have to wear gloves. <laughs> I have to, I'm going to grab a pair of gloves. Because if not, I won't be able to do anything for a long time. <laughs> so I usually just use some vinyl gloves. I'll look like I've been working on a car if I don't wear these. So definitely wear gloves when you're doing this process at this point. Now that we're finished with our folding. We're going to have, there we are. So getting prepared for the fun. Is everybody doing okay? <laughs> it's so quiet. <laughs> everybody okay? All right. Looks like it. Yeah. All right. I hope you're having fun. I think everyone's going to wait and see the big reveal too. That's always the exciting part. <laughs> yes, the fun part. So this is where it gets fun. All right. So I'll put my little... All right, I'm going to have to get my space set up. All right, I've got the opportunities galore here. So I'll do this one. Oh, heck, which one should I do? <laughs> let's do the first one was the, let's do the bone first. Okay, so I showed you, these two are the bone ones. Okay, so I'm going to do these first. And I'm going to use this tray to make my mess. And this is what I like about doing this. You can keep your, as long as you keep everything in a small area, you know, I mean, you're working small like this. You don't need a lot of space, but this is going to get messy. And usually I like to work with one color family. I don't want to mix warm colors with cool, unless I intend to just make a mud, you know, mess. So I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, I'm going to have to pick something I haven't used yet. This one is Payne's Gray. This one is indigo. Let's do an indigo and some of this, and maybe some turquoise. Why not? Something for them. So let's do it with this one. Spritz it again. And there's, now the reason I talked about brushes, this is kind of how I like to work. So I grab a brush and I kind of paint the paint, the paper on. <laughs> I, I, you can do it this way. You can use a dropper like this one goes straight on and you would just dribble it on in the areas that you want to dribble it. Okay, so I'm kind of doing this in a pattern. You see, I've got like some black and then I'll do the same on this side, pouring it in, kind of just like, just trying to control my flow a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to just for fun, I'm going to add, this is an acrylic ink. Let's see, this is a, it has a dropper, so that's why I'm doing it. But if it didn't have a dropper, I'll show you what I do. So I'm going to put some of this, this turquoise. Ooh, it's going where it wants to go. That's fun. And then I'm just dribbling it in between the spaces that I had the other. That's fun. Okay. Ooh, fun, fun. Now, I'm not, I don't see a lot of soaking in because I didn't spray it too much. But this stuff also, it, um, bleeds differently here is if you don't see a lot of movement see what i just did i sprayed that and it's gonna a lot more is going in now so let's see i'm gonna get some document ink <laughs> just because 
And I'm going to, it's a black blue, and I'm just going to use my brush and I'm going to paint some on right in here. Just like right here. Just want to see how it's going to work. All right. And I think I've probably done enough on this one, maybe. I'm going to put some more down on this side. Okay. So what, what I want to do now is I'm going to kind of squeeze this together. And this is where you can take a paper towel. And you just kind of gently squeeze, leave it for a few minutes, let the color do its thing. Because it's definitely going to kind of soak in. Um, if you want to add a little more water, you, just to see if that's going to help as well, move the colors. And I'm, I'm just going to let that sit for a little bit. And then I'm going to do this one. This one, I can barely see. So, I mean, I, I, it's the, maybe the little sticks are just a little too... <laughs> I might need to take these off. That's a little too fat, or they're just... There we are. All right, I'm going to do something simple on this one. I'm going to take... A brush because I don't have. Um, I think I'm just gonna take my black ink and I'm just gonna use my brush. You can do this too. If you want to make your um, kind of control the amount of spread, I should have this. Uh, there we go. It's not the best way to do that, but all right. The other another way you can do it is just dip it right into the edge of whatever you're working with. Let's see. I'm going to mix some of this ink with that too. Yeah, I'm just going to take it and run it along the edge here. You see how messy it gets? And then turn. I'm going to turn it over and do, do the other side. That's a gorgeous color though, that black blue. Wow, really pretty. I'm just going to do this. This isn't my normal, I would have used probably a thin popsicle stick to hold this together, but you see how it's going into the paper, just gorgeous. And that's, so that's how you can control um, your a little bit. And I don't think, I'm just gonna try to sap up as much as I can of that color that's there on the, in the tray. So that I'll let, maybe add a little more, okay. And then you can squeeze, kind of gently squeeze and you know, the more you squeeze, the more you're, you're gonna get some interesting spread. I might even add a little more, right on the, just on the very edge, because I'm seeing it needs to be a little bit more bold. There we go. Okay, that, I'm not gonna unfold it yet. I'm just gonna let it sit for a little bit, let it marinate. And now the other one is a little, this little gorgeous one. Now this one, is a one way you could do this is you can dip if you want if you have a, a some sumi ink which I do <laughs> I'll do this one in sumi ink you can take your ink pour it right in and you can just take your piece and dip the corner maybe just the corners and the more you dip the more it's sort of like a straw it picks up the color. And then I'm going to do the, this corner. Just kind of let it let it do its thing. And I wanted to add a little bit of watercolor. And I think this is a gorgeous color. This is a turquoise, Dr. Martin's watercolor. That's going to be really pretty. I'll set the move that out of the way. So you don't have to stick to black. You can have them in all kinds of colors. And now I'm just going to put it where, um, not on the uh, corners, but this time in the center. That's not working. I don't have much color in there, do I? It's almost out. That's why. All right. So I'm going to take a different brush and use that to just put some color right on the in the areas in between the black. Okay. So that's good. Now this one, I'm going to just squeeze and maybe spritz a little bit, just to kind of let that do its thing. Okay, let it sit for a minute. All right, we got another one here. We're gonna do all of these. So, and I think I might as well just stay in the same color family because it just makes it a little easier. This one was totally dry, bone dry, but I'm gonna go ahead and 
dampen it. And I love some of this turquoise that's getting on it. It's a total tie-dye session. Um, this is all turquoise, and I will add some black. I'll do the same thing. I'm just putting in the color kind of where I want it. And then I'll use some, oh, I'll use some semi ink while it's out. And here we go. So you see, you can be creative in how you do this. And then the best part is after you're finished and you're ready to unfold it, that's the, mo the most fun. So, all right. I'm just going to kind of squeeze these together, kind of let them do their thing. Uh, maybe I'll spritz it. I'll go ahead and spritz a little. Yeah, let that soak in. The more concentrated your color is, the more the more um, contrast you're going to have. So if you have a very pale color, you're going to have a very soft color. And if you're going to, you know, the more deep, pure, uh, the more concentrated, the better uh, saturation and better contrast. So that's that one. Now this one is the diamond fold. And I'm going to mix... Oh boy, am I getting a mess. <laughs> All right, I'm going to miss. I've got some other blue I wanted to try. That's the document tank. I'm going to try. Oh, let's see. What can I try here? I'm going to try this gorgeous blue. It's like a, it's a Japanese uh, calligraphy or fountain pen ink. It's a really gorgeous color. So I just wanted to try it. And, but you could use, if you don't have inks, you could use like thin down, Paints, um, whatever you've got, really, just as long as they're thin so that they'll spread on the paper. All right, that's going to be oh, beautiful. I'm going to put it on this side. Very pretty. And then I think I need to add some black to that. Just to give lots of contrast. You can make put it on the ends. And now the black. Uh, this time I'm going to use this, this stuff. I'm just going to pour it on. But you can go put more on the sides and then it will go into the grooves, into this, to the folds. And this one I'm going to just squeeze and make a big mess with my hands, get my hands all, or at least my gloves, not my hands. So that one I'm just going to sit for a minute and you see my little string is all uh, soaked black. And this is a great way to dye your, if you want to dye your uh, cotton, you know, twine, you, this is how you do it. You can do it while at the same time, just, you know, kind of double duty here. All right. So we've got that one. Now I'll set that aside and then we have one more and then I'm going to do the reveal. All right. The same thing. I'm just going to do some, whatever I've got in my, my dish here. I'm just going to dip Dip and let it soak in. Here's some black sumi ink. And maybe some of the blue. I don't know what that is. Oh, here, I'll just grab another brush. So I want to try some of that, more of that blue. But I could also, if I had some, could get it dipped inside. I mean, I could, if I had a little dish, I could dip it that way. But whatever you want to do. I just want to see how this looks. It's almost indigo-like. Okay, lots of black. I'll put some black on that. All right. I think I have enough color on that, I hope. So messy, messy. Now this is where I have to clear my space out a little bit. I'm going to just squish this a little bit. Maybe do the tip a little bit more. I'll some ink. Give more contrast drama. And squish, squish. You can see what's happening here. Now, now I'm going to move all this out of the way. <laughs> all right. No more painting. And I'm going to just close all this up because I want to reveal all these. This is the fun part. Okay. Now, the thing I usually do is I, it's still good, advisable to wear gloves. I am going to change my gloves or at least <laughs> wipe off these. I won't change them. I'm just going to wipe them off so that at least they don't uh, change or alter my my beautiful uh, patterns. So just kind of dry off your gloves. 
All right, so it's ready to go. I'm, I'm ready. I haven't made this. Can't make a handprint there. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is fun. Okay, so the first one. I'm just gonna get all my ink bottles closed up so I don't do some accident, which you know I'm gonna do. And I'm also gonna put my brushes in temporarily. I know that's a bad thing to do, but I have to do it temporarily, <laughs> just temporarily. And I'm going to move all this out of the way so you can see how gorgeous this is going to be. Okay, so let's take the first one with the string. Let's do this one because I wanted to show you if you want to dye the string, um, you just snip it off and then you can save that and you can make yourself this nice black. Now I've got some nice cotton string that's dyed black. So I'll save that. I won't throw that away. Yep, there it is. Isn't that nice? I'll keep that. Okay, let's do this. Let's see what happens. Okay, now when you do this, it's wet. If you wait till it's completely dry, um, you may damage your paper, but you don't want it so soaking wet that it's fragile. So it is fragile at this point. So when you're doing this, uh, gently just take apart very slowly. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, just, ah, I love this part. <laughs> My favorite part. Okay, so I've got one side. Now you'll notice there's a lot of transfer. So um, I just wanna make sure that uh, I don't tear. There we go. And do this on a surface that is uh, protected, obviously, right? Okay, so I'm gonna gently take this apart, unfold it. And okay, so I got that part unfolded. And now I want to unfold these little thin layers. So I'm just gonna have to look for where the, make sure that's not. All right, here it is. Well, that is gonna be so pretty. So this is the diamond pattern. I'm just trying to find the ends and I've got my little, I can't see the ends. I don't, but I don't wanna tear it here. If you do tear it, that's okay. You can, you know, you can still use the paper. There we go. That's next. And then one more layer and it will be this edge, I think. Now, uh, normally I can, yeah, I can't feel anything, so I have to, I'm going to have to get a little dirty today. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, well. But it's easier to see, it's easier to feel uh, the two layers, I think. <laughs> I may have, I don't see it. Maybe I have the wrong end. I don't know. Probably. There it is. Nope. I don't want to tear it. It's so pretty. But you'll see the pattern. Um, there, yep, that's this is the end right here. I might have to sacrifice a corner here. There, there it is. Okay, there. All right. <laughs> that's never happened. I'm getting impatient now. I think I might wait for this one, but or uh, I'm just ready to chop off a corner. <laughs> never had. Normally, I can just get them apart, but. Uh, I think I just folded it so, oh, there we go. There it is. Okay. Look at that. That is the diamond pattern. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my gosh. So then when you're done with these, um, what you do is you put them like right now, I'm gonna, now that you see it, isn't that gorgeous? Yay. Okay, I'm putting this down on my floor that, that I have covered with paper because you don't want to get, this stuff will still transfer onto your furniture or table or whatever. So you got to just give it, you know, give it some time to dry before you go, you know, before, or you use a hair dryer. It's kind of what I did earlier today. So I'm going to wipe off some of that stuff off my hand. Oh, why am I doing that? It doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, next one, the bone. This is the simple one you saw, simple accordion. And look at that beautiful patterning. Very simple, but really striking. So that one's, that's just a simple accordion, the bone. Now I'll do, uh, I'm gonna open up the other one. This is the one that I did earlier in the week. And I always save my rubber bands. I don't like to throw them away. But we just take, take your rubber bands and use them again. You can use them over. So just until they get so gummed up that you can't use them again. All right. Aren't these? Yes, exactly. So trying to, yeah, less waste is a good thing. 
and we can reuse our chopsticks or you know popsicle sticks that you might have um, skewers you can just any bamboo skewers that you may have in your kitchen or just anything flat if you want to be able to uh, use these to help flatten your pieces so well, this is going to be fun so these were two chap or uh, bamboo skewers that i cut up those make great ones but see what they did is they made a resist right in the center so let's see how this looks unfolded oh that's going to be pretty um very it's a lot because it was dry it's a little it's a lot different but i love that patterning i'm getting these really nice lines something totally completely unique from the other ones that's the bone as well and that turquoise ink doesn't spread as much, but it sure is fun. That one's fun. Okay, let's see what this one looks like. These are our these are our snowflake ones, and I don't know which. This is the one I think I folded in front of you. So let's take those, and let's take a look. This is my favorite part. It's just the finished. Oh, that I broke the the. Uh, I broke the rubber band on that one. I don't think I'll be able to use that one again. So let's check, take a look at this one. So snowflake pattern. I actually, there's a man on YouTube and I don't know what, I think he's from Thailand and he does amazing fabrics. And he showed how to do the snowflake pattern. And this is how I learned. I learned it from him and he did it with fabric, but I just converted it to paper. And see how that gorgeous pattern is happening? It's got like a little starburst kind of snowflakey pattern on that one so that one can be used for collage i could turn it flatten it and iron it and turn it into an origami paper if i want i think it would look really pretty but there's that one yeah pretty and let's do one more reveal and then anyone has any questions oh two more okay oops this is the one that I, oh yeah, that one was dry. This one was the, also the um, diamond pattern, but this one I did dry. I didn't, so we'll see what this looks like. So this is how you can do, just do your folding first and then do the dyeing and the uh, unfolding all in one big gang. And then you've got lots of papers to work with. Save all your pieces. So let's see what this one looks like. And then play with colors. Oh, woo. That's fun. And you can't get these patterns any other way. Let's see. And I love the, the type of patterning that happens. Oh, wow. It's, it's like a surprise each time. You just never, it's like that box of chocolates. You just don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> Here we go. That's gorgeous. There's the diamond pattern. And look at that gorgeous diamond right in the center. So that one really came out really nice. I'd like to make some fabric out of this. I'm, I'm going to do the fabric so that I can make some garments or scarves or something. But there, that, there's that one. And then the last one is our... Is this the Starburst one that I had... Uh, yeah, this is the one I folded before. And I love that the rubber band has created a resist. Just like tie-dye, you know t-shirts or fabrics you can do that with the paper and that makes really subtle um very subtle marks oh and this is with that gorgeous japanese uh fountain pen ink which i hope i didn't ruin by dipping a brush that had sumi ink in it but this is this this is also the snowflake so let's see how that looks and this is the one i folded in front of everyone and it's really interesting to see how the sumi ink reacts or the sumi ink spreads. Oh wow! And the um, the uh, fountain pen ink kind of just makes a really wild wow kaleidoscope pattern. Is that isn't that gorgeous? I'm like all over that. I want to wear it. <laughs> Whoa! So this is so there we go. So there you've got this kaleidoscope thing happening. Wow! <laughs> isn't that fun? Now, does anyone have any questions? I know I folded quickly. But I'm hoping that I got you inspired to make to make these beautiful papers. It does need to be a scarf kitty, doesn't it? <laughs>
a paper scarf. I'll think we'll have to figure out something. But knowing, you know, practicing this way, doing it where you practice on your paper, then you get the hang of it. Because fabric is a little more precious and more expensive, right? So, you know, to do this, practice on your paper. And then once you've got the idea, then you can you can get some, you can do this in fabric, you know, on cotton. Silk would look gorgeous. Um, look at that. These patterns are just, I don't know if you see those. I hope you see that nice and close up. But oh, it's just so pretty. So, and I'm so glad you're making, oh, and you made four of them. So, Con Olivia, you made four. And the snowflake is gorgeous. And and it does this, it's very peaceful. And if I want to use this in collage, like I would use, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, there's just so... It's almost like I'm going to have to scan this um, before I cut it up because <laughs> that one turned out stunning. But, you know, what you could do is you could iron these out or get them dry, scan them and use them in making patterns, you know, like making origami paper. Yes, and it does, Lynn, it's like stained glass. It's really pretty. So there and so then afterwards, you let them dry completely and you're good to go to use them. Uh, clean your brushes like I, that what I did was bad with these brushes I hope I don't ruin them but um anyway <laughs> well after we're finished today which we are wrapping up and it's actually almost that time I can't believe it so wow is anybody have oh little frogs and insects yes <laughs> I love it it's like a Rorschach test so anyone have any questions any ideas anything you want us to do for next the next uh, Zoom, the next live. Anybody? <laughs> we are always happy to take new suggestions, but we also have a list of other ideas that people yeah. have um, mentioned in the past. So we have lots to pick from, but we love to show you guys what you are most interested in. Like, I think this one was something that <laughs> Karen had shown that you guys said you wanted to see. Yes. Yeah, this was taken, this was a request, and um, I'm, I'm glad I, you know, I actually didn't really make a big, huge mess. I mean, I did make a mess, what I'm, I'm saying, but, you know, <laughs> it's not, it's, it's manageable. <laughs> so keep, enjoy, so enjoy it, and if you've made some, please post your pictures. We'd love to see what you're making. Yes, we always love seeing what everyone creates and it's, it's really inspiring and it's why we do what we do. So we do love seeing what everybody creates and we will, um, you know, let us know if you have any new video ideas that you'd love for us to do. Um, otherwise, we will come back in two weeks with something else for you that we, we think you'll love. Um, but Karen, One thing I want to mention, if you yeah. are um, someone who works with dyes and you like, like let's say... Um, the dye inks, the sprays, oh, like the distress sprays, those would be really fun to do this with, but be sure to wear gloves the whole time. Like I'm removing the, because of all of the work, the stuff I'm working with is pigmented. It comes off, you know, it's, it comes off fairly easy just by wiping it. But any dye base, you're gonna, it's gonna be uh, a nightmare to remove. Um, especially when it gets in your under your fingernails and everything. So just be use caution when you're using dyes, any dye based um, sprays or inks, uh, just be really make sure you wear your gloves until after the dye has dried. <laughs> Don't otherwise you'll just be a sad person. I know I will be. <laughs> so I'm so glad. Yes. Hand washing. I will do a little bit of hand washing, but at least with a, with the dye, um, it would take me days, I would or weeks, so to get it all out. So I hope you all had a wonderful, you know, peaceful time, uh, or you got to make some of this shibori or or izagami, and and uh, love to see what you've made. So please post pictures, share share your uh, images. That'd be great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Karen. This was one of my favorites that you've ever done. This was really cool. Um, and we will see everybody in the next Facebook Live in two weeks. Have a good weekend. Wonderful. We'll see you soon. All right. Bye.